Greetings, fellow mathematicians. Let's take a look at a third example on the method of undetermined coefficients. Step one, always look for your complementary solution. So to do that, we're going to solve the homogeneous ODE where the right-hand side equals zero. So 2y double prime plus 2y prime plus 5y equals zero. We can quickly convert to the characteristic equation. 2r squared plus 2r plus 5 equals zero. And I'm looking at that and I don't think that quickly factors. It might factor, but the quadratic formula is quicker. So let's go ahead and jump straight to that. I have my values of a, b, and c. I can plug them in. We'll get negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4a. So that's 8 times another c. So we get 4 minus 40, and that's all over 2a. Looks like you can clean up the inside there as negative 2 plus or minus square root of negative 36. And we can see we're going to get complex values here. The square root of negative 36, we can write that as 6i. And notice 2, 6, and 4 all have factors of 2 in them. So you can divide the factor of 2 out and write your complex roots as negative 1 half plus or minus 3 halves i. Now in the case of complex roots to the characteristic equation, we identify the real part here where what we call a is negative 1 half. Be careful not to confuse a with the value of a in your quadratic expression here that we use for the quadratic formula. The other part that we need, the imaginary part, what we call b, that is 3 halves. So you have your real part, you have your imaginary part, your complementary solution in this case of complex characteristic roots looks like a constant times e to the ax, where a is negative 1 half, but now times sine of bx. And then we add to that a similar term in the complementary solution, but with sine replaced with cosine. So c2, e to the negative 1 half x times cosine of 3 halves x. And that does it for our complementary solution. Now we can move on to finding the particular solution. And to start, we always look at the non-zero right-hand side, what we call g of x. Here, that is e to the negative 2x. Now be careful g of x is an exponential function. Our complementary solution contains exponential functions, but it's not duplicated. Our complementary solution has exponentials multiplied by sine or cosine. This doesn't duplicate either of those terms. That means we can just use our initial choice for the particular solution based off of g of x which is a general exponential function with a constant in front. We might write that as a times e to the negative 2x. We're going to have to calculate first and second derivatives of yp. That's going to be very simple using the chain rule. Each time you apply the chain rule here, you'll get a factor of negative 2 coming down. So for our first derivative, yp prime, looks like we get minus 2a times e to the negative 2x. And differentiate that again, you'll get another factor of negative 2 coming down, giving you positive 4a 
times the exponential. We have everything that we need to plug it all back into the non-homogeneous ODE. We're going to take our time with that. So we're going to replace all y's here with yp. So we'll get 2yp double prime plus 2yp prime plus 5yp. And we need that to all come out to simplify and leave us with e to the negative 2x. All right, let's go ahead and plug everything in. Notice each of our function and derivatives terms is multiplied by a constant, 2, 2, and 5. So just be careful. When we plug in our second derivative term, so we can write that as 8a, and that's times the exponential. Looks like when we plug in our first derivative term, we have negative 2a times 2. We can write that as minus 4a times e to the negative 2x. And when you plug in your other term here for yp, just the function, no derivatives, we get 5 times that, so plus 5a times e to the negative 2x. And that all should equal e to the negative 2x, the non-zero right-hand side. All right, looks like we can clean this up a little bit. Uh, geez, if we do some basic math here, uh, what do we get here? We have 8a minus 4a plus 4, uh, 5a. What is that? 9a times the exponential. So 9a e to the negative 2x equals e to the negative 2x. And just be careful here. Make sure you can see what you're equating on both sides. We're not equating powers of x, but our like terms here are exponentials. So if we equate the coefficients of the exponential functions on each side, the left side, the coefficient is 9a. And on the right side, in front of that exponential, there's a coefficient of 1. And we can easily solve that, divide by 9. So we get a as 1 over 9. And that's it for finding the particular solution. We can plug that back in up here. And we get as our particular solution 1 over 9 times e to the negative 2x. We have our complementary solution. Let's just write down our full solution. Which is a linear combination of the complementary solution and the particular solution. So we're just going to write this, this down again. So c1, e to the negative 1 half x times sine of 3 halves x plus c2, e to the negative 1 half x times cosine of 3 halves x. And then we add to that our particular solution, which is 1 ninth times e to the negative 2x. And that is our full solution to the non-homogeneous ODE. This one wasn't too bad. Exponential functions are very simple to differentiate. So you should be hoping and praying for exponential functions for the right-hand sides of differential equations on your exams. Hope you enjoyed the content. Support the channel. Make sure to like and subscribe.